Tom Kozlowski here with you on 104.5 The Team and 104.5 The Team.com. And this Friday, the NHL draft is live in Buffalo, New York. And joining us on the phone lines, he works for WGR 550 in Buffalo and is an ESPN hockey insider. Matthew Collar joins us. And Matthew, we right here on 104.5 The Team are the home for the Albany Devils, the AHL affiliate of the New Jersey Devils. The Devils have the 11th pick in the first round. Best case scenario, what player are they hoping for? Uh, I think the player that a lot of people are tying the Devils to is a center named Clayton Keller, who mm. comes from the U.S. Uh, development team, and he put up huge, huge point totals with the development team. They're really impressive, and the only reason that he wouldn't be drafted in the top ten, uh, possibly just outside the top ten, is just his height. And even though the Pittsburgh Penguins and Chicago Blackhawks are two of the smaller teams in the league, and they won the last couple of cups. There still is a little bit of that stigma that goes on in the NHL of wanting the bigger guys, wanting the taller guys, which may allow the Devils to sneak in and get a highly skilled player like Keller. Uh, I think looking at their depth chart down the road here as they rebuild, that they really need a highly skilled player. This year, the Devils had two 30-goal scorers, and then the next best had 14 goals. And I, I think that tells you a lot about where they are with their skill players. And in my mind, they don't really have a pure scorer, uh, even in the system. Pavel Zaka is going to be more of an all-around player. He's their top prospect. So they could really use a player like Keller. That's the guy I've got my eye on for them. And you talked about the goal deficiencies almost for the Devils, how guys struggle to get it at net. And they end up ranking last in the NHL in goal scores. Let's say they do get Clayton Keller and he becomes a Devil. Is he one of those guys because they just need so much offense that he could maybe win the Rookie of the Year because of the role he could play on that team early? Yeah, it, it would really depend of, about whether he could make the team. And, and for anybody that's not drafted in the top five, it's usually a stretch that they'll make the team right away. Usually it takes a little more development and I would be concerned with Keller because of his size that he needs to fill out that body a little bit more. I mean, usually we're talking about the top couple of players. We know that Austin Matthews and, and Patrick Laine, we know that those guys are going to play in the NHL right away. But anything outside of that, Sean Monahan a few years ago was the sixth overall pick, and Rasmus Ristolainen was eighth, and both of them played in the NHL in their first year. But it'd be pretty surprising. It's not unprecedented, but I, I think I, I would to play there. For the Devils, in my mind, it's all about the future, that this team really needs to, to start a rebuild. Last year, I thought they kind of went, they went like halfway on the rebuild, because they still had really good goaltending, and they started to move some parts out, but also, you know, kept a player like Mike Camilleri, that's more of a, a win-now sort of guy, instead of trying to just move out everything that wasn't nailed down. So I think they need more of a, a good starting point for that rebuild here, with a, with a player like Keller, which would mean don't push him right away, don't force him to be in the NHL too early, because you've seen what's happened in Edmonton with all the young players that mm -hmm. they pushed ahead too early. This Friday, the NHL draft is live in Buffalo, New York, and joining us, he works for WGR 550. He's a hockey insider for ESPN. Matthew Collar joins us on the phone lines. And Matthew, the New York Rangers don't have a pick until 81 overall. Any chance they try to make a move up the draft and try to grab someone there? Yeah, the name that's out there right now is uh, Derek Stefan is being mm. talked about a lot as a player that could be moved potentially for the Rangers to uh, find themselves back in, in the first round. I would be a little surprised because Stefan is a, is a terrific player, but I think all the chatter around the Rangers is that something needs to change there. They've had this core of players for a long time around Henrik Lundqvist, and it just hasn't worked. And last year was probably – one of the worst teams they've had since Lundqvist has been in his prime and, and since he signed that contract with the, with the giant cap hit and $10 million a year. So I, I think they need to start moving out some of those parts and finding some younger players while staying competitive, which is a very difficult tightrope to walk. But um, you know, they have a lot of guys that are on contract that are just flat out bad, especially uh, Dan Girardi and Mark Stahl and, and even Rick Nash's cap hit it didn't justify what he did uh, last year, and he could definitely be on the block as well. I don't know if he gets into the first round, uh, but I, I would watch out for them to be making some draft day trades. I could definitely see it. You're right there in Buffalo where the draft's going to be going on. Of course, Saber fans are going to be watching very closely. Last year, they got a great player in Jack Eichel. What are Sabres fans hoping for in this year's NHL draft? Well, I think there's probably two camps 
of people in Buffalo. There's one camp that wants them to trade the pick and try to get a star player now, potentially from a team that is either disgruntled with some of their younger players like Edmonton. They've got a couple of guys on the block. Or there's the other camp that would just want the Sabres to get another quality young player, um, whether it's a left-handed defenseman that could eventually play on their top pair with Rasmus Ristolainen, or another scorer that even though they just got the rights to Jimmy D.C., that's not a lock. And as the Sabres, you mentioned that the Devils were the worst team in the league at scoring. For even strength scoring, the Sabres were 29th. They need more guys who can put up points. And there's a couple of names that, that I know that are on the, the Sabres' radar. One of them is Alex Nylander, uh, brother of William Nylander, who is a very highly skilled player. And the, the two defensemen, Ole Olevi and uh, Mikhail Sergachev, Two left-handed defensemen, highly intelligent, and very talented. I, I, I think those are the type of players that the Sabres are, are really looking at at eight. And whether they decide to move the pick to try and uh, push forward their rebuild a little faster or use it, uh, I think they almost can't go wrong here on draft day. Uh, Jack Eichel for the Sabres, Connor McDavid for Edmonton. They had so much hype going into the last year's draft. Austin Matthews looks to be the number one overall pick for Toronto at the one spot. Can Matthews have that type of impact? Can he be that type of player as he projected to be as great as Eichel and McDavid were in last year's draft? Yeah, I think he could definitely be in that range of an elite player and a franchise player. How much he can do right away uh, might be in the same range as what Jack Eichel did last year for the Sabres. Probably not McDavid. David was historic levels of being around a point per game. But when it comes to a player like Matthews, he had a very uh, unique situation where he was able to play in the Swiss League and his team ended up playing in the championship game and he was one of the top scorers in the league, which gave him experience playing in a league where there's a lot of ex-NHL players. He played in the championship game against Derek Roy's team. His Sabres fans uh, remember Derek Roy, so that's where he is now a guy who was a very good NHL player in his time. So that makes it, for me, an easy, easier transition for Matthews than any of the players that would have played in juniors against kids that were 17 or, or 18 years old. He was playing against grown men. So if you're the, the Maple Leafs, even though your eye is still on a couple of years from now, you should expect Austin Matthews, like Eiffel McDavid, to come right in and make an impact right away. 104.5, the team's NHL draft coverage starts on Friday. You can follow us on Twitter at 104.5, the team. Check our Facebook page as well. I will be there live on location in Buffalo. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Tom Gonz, T-O-M-G-O-Z-Z. And if you want, make sure to follow Matthew. Listen to WGR if you're in the Buffalo area. they got coverage all week on long. Matthew Collar, WGR 550 ESPN Hockey Insider. Matthew, look forward to hopefully catching up with you this weekend. Thank you so much for the time and enjoy the draft. Thanks a lot, man.